Hi all, welcome to the second installment of the uh, chapter one of Ransom. Um, we're starting at page 15 um, and we've just read uh, the, the description of the connection, the um, bond between Achilles and Patrocles, Patroclus um, and it, they've been described as by um, Maloof as mated. So there's an intense um, a brotherly affection, but it's more than that. They're, they're, they're described like mates. Um, and so now begins that section of flashback. This is a long narrative section uh, where uh, Maloof recounts the death of Patroclus. Um, so how that all turns out, um, Achilles and Agamemnon are in a conflict. Um, so Achilles here decides to withdraw his forces from the Greek army um, due to a conflict with Agamemnon. Um, that's described slightly later in the narrative. But um, because Achilles being the most uh, formidable of the warriors when he withdraws his Myrmidons, um, the Trojans then um, um, fight back quite valiantly and many many of the Greek army begin to to begin to die um, so Patroclus um, wants to fight he wants to fight alongside his his Greek uh, soldiers his Greek countrymen and Achilles holds him back held back from the fight um, because of Achilles quarrel with the generals um, and so um, Patroclus sees all of the uh, soldiers dying and um, his pure heart was torn um, and Achilles sees that indifference um, sorry Achilles uh, sees his pure heart and the fact that Patroclus is just torn up over the death of all of these countrymen, um, but Achilles is indifferent to their fate. Um, and Patroclus describes Achilles' indifference as a stain on his honour. Um, and so they, Patroclus and Achilles, are in conflict. Patroclus wants Achilles to join the fight, um, but Achilles doesn't want to. Um, he's resents um, Patroclus's judgment. Um, even though Patroclus isn't saying anything, he's judging him silently um, and there is disunity between them and it's called, described as a torment to Achilles. Um, he has a conflict with Agamemnon. He's it des it's described as a just one, um, a just conflict. That means that Achilles is certain he's in the right. Um, He's been openly insulted by Agamemnon. There's a description on the top of page 17 of the origin of that conflict. So um, the generals had awarded Briseis, who's a slave girl, um, as a prize of war, and he'd grown quite fond of her. So Achilles loves Briseis. Um, so Agamemnon has uh, been awarded uh, Chryseis, but she's been ransomed, there's that word again, she's been ransomed and sent back to Troy. Um, and at that time, Agamemnon, because his own woman has been taken away, he demands that Briseis, Achilles' woman, be um, the replacement to Chryseis. Um, so um, Achilles refused and they... Um, beginning a, um, a bit of a conflict. Um, Agamemnon raged and roared and crudely berated him and Achilles also lost his temper. Um, and now um, Achilles was refusing to fight and the Greek generals are all suffering, um, including Patroclus, Peleus, they've all been insulted by Agamemnon's action of stealing Achilles' woman. Um, now Patroclus is brooding, which means he's silently complaining, um, 
and Achilles says in frustration, if this all touches you so deeply, Patroclus, you go out and save the Greeks. And Patroclus declares that, yes, he will do that since the great Achilles won't do it. And Achilles is too proud to admit that he might be in the wrong. Uh, he's ill at ease with this conflict with Patroclus. Patroclus is weeping for Achilles and the conflict as well. They don't like the unhappy rift, but Patroclus is determined. And so he begs to take the Myrmidons and he begs for um, Achilles' armour because he says when the Trojans see his helmet and shield, they'll think it's Achilles and they will withdraw, they will draw back. Um, Achilles is filled with misgiving, but He's suddenly drained of all his will and so he assents, he agrees. And um, they reconcile, so Patroclus hugs him and then he joins the battlefield and the Greeks call out Achilles when they see his armour. The Trojans also echo that, Achilles, Achilles. Um, and and so um, Patroclus, dressed as Achilles, uh, raises his arm um, um, in acknowledgement of the Greeks cheering for him. And here at the top of page 20, um, it comes very suddenly um the confusion of war the clangorous ringing of bronze against bronze remembering it's the bronze age there and then his helmet achilles helmet which is on patroclus's head suddenly is struck from his head and patroclus is surprised his open mouth with astonishment but he then goes crashing. So this is the description of the death of Patroclus. And um, Maloof, with the series of flashbacks, has introduced the reader to the relationship, the close relationship, the deep love that Achilles has for Patroclus. So he's, um, at this moment, we recognise his depth of his grief, but particularly because he allowed the um, the decision, he gave him his armour. Um, the um, We can assume anyway, I assume as a reader, that there must be some part of it where he's blaming himself, but perhaps um, as we humans are want to do, um, we don't like to blame ourselves, so we shift the blame to the people around us. So Achilles is a description of the intense grief, how he wept. And I noticed um, just in terms of literary devices, there's the sentence fragments that are used here. So wept without restraint, sitting cross-legged, pouring fitfuls of dust. Um, so there's the repeated sentence fragments that really emphasise the a sense of grief through the voice of Achilles that Maloof is actually using through his narration, this omniscient narrator, but at the moment it's limited omniscient through the um, viewpoint of Achilles. Um, so here, two days later, the ghost of Patroclus occurred. And the first time I read this, I was like, is it a real ghost? Is it a met metaphorical ghost? Is he actually insane and having visions or hallucinations? Um, but it certainly uh, appears to me reading it a couple of times that it actually is a, a real ghost of Patroclus. Um, and Patroclus, the ghost, begs him to um, stop uh, calling for him but instead to bury his body um, and so there's a description there of um, the funeral pyre so the ashes of the funeral pyre um, and 
here on page 21, Achilles says, just a little longer, Patroclus. Can you hear me soon now, soon? Um, he's wishing to join Patroclus in death. Um, but before that, he has to deal with Patroclus's killer, which is... Um, uh, we know as Hector later on that just that just um, is discovered as well. So uh, then there's a section here which begins um, <clears throat> the killing of Hector, page 21. So Hector actually is wearing Achilles' armor. Um, so the armor that is stripped from Patroclus, um, Hector now wears to mock him, to mock Achilles. Um, and the helmet is described with the horse hair crest and the plumes. Um, so uh, they have a close quarters, sword to sword, dodging this way. So they are having it out, man on man. Um, and at the end of this paragraph here, it described Hector's death. And when Hector dies, he's wearing Achilles' armor. And so he describes it as watching the dreamlike enactment of his own because um, he looks like Achilles. It's like he's dying. Um, and Achilles finally found the place where he can ease that heavy weapon in. Um, and this is the description of the moment where Achilles pushes in that sword, puts his whole weight behind the body and his, all the force of it he puts into Hector's body, quite a brutal death. Um, and there's a, uh, I guess, a connection, a unity, um, a, a de description of this moment of the, of the death. Um, and the conversation of the last words that they have, it's described as brotherly concern. Uh, so um, Hector speaks to Achilles and he says, you will not long outlive me, Achilles. There's only a few days left. So these days are few that you have to work, walk on the earth. Um, but he says also the precise point when Hector's breath gave out and it was replaced with the voice of the god of a god. So there's a recognition that Hector starts speaking, but actually it's the will of the gods to communicate this to him. Um, and they feel the last of Hector's breath and Hector dies. And at this moment, Achilles feels his soul change colour. Um, so this is the depth of rage and vengeance. Um, so he uh, loses track of time. So he doesn't know how long time passes. Um, and then he gets his myrmidons um, to surround Hector's corpse and they take off the armour and um, one by one the myrmidons plunge their swords into Hector's unprotected flesh. So each of the myrmidons then um, add to um, Achilles' wounds and at each blow, they're shouting his name. So all of those watching from the walls of Troy um, may hear it. And Hector, in the underworld, uh, the downward path into the underworld would also hear it. Um, and as Achilles watches, he is like a dead man feeling nothing. And we have the repetition here of those sentence fragments. Um, so his revenge is complete, but he's still empty. Um, and so um, at this point, all of the Myrmidons have stabbed the body and um, 
he takes a knife and he actually um, slashes from the ankle to the heel the tendons of Hector's feet um, and then he takes a oxhide thong that's kind of a leather belt maybe I don't know but he ties the feet together and um, drags Hector's body the corpse to his chariot um, and he fastens it and it says to the car which obviously is not a modern car but a, a chariot um, and then he it's describes Maloof describes the that he is like a man obeying the needs of some other darker agency so like a darker power um, so he's not really in control of what he's doing he's kind of being led um, by his own rage and his own out of control emotions um, and so he then begins to wheel his um, chariot out and so behind the chariot the body um, it leaps the body follows um, and the body <laughs> there's a brutal description of how the body kind of jumps as it touches the stones and as the speed gathers um and faster and faster he drives as you notice here on this page the length of the sentence so the depth of his grief um and the rage that's consuming him um, so the sentence starts here faster and faster he drove up and down under the walls of Troy his hair loose and flying gouts of sweat flung from his brow as Hector's corpse raw now from head to foot and caked with dust bounded and tumbled and Priam Hector's father and his mother Hecuba and his wife Andromache and with the child Astanax at her hip and Hector's brothers and brother-in-law and their wives and all the common people of Troy who had flocked to every vantage point on the walls looked on so it's an incredibly long sentence um, that is really reflecting used to reflect the chaos of his emotions as he drags the body of Hector behind him and almost taunting the people of Troy and the relatives of Hector uh, but still Achilles felt nothing um, he is trying to feel that rage that inside of him that would be equal to the outrage that he was committing that would assuage that would make his grief feel better uh, but he's still empty and so that's a description of um, the account of the death of Patroclus then the death of Hector and the first decision for him to drag the body and that's where we'll stop